Yeah, g'day guys, welcome to another episode of Shanky Garage. So in this episode of the HX1 Tonner Build, going to repair the right hand side chassis as mentioned in the previous episode. Also going to install some LED tail lights into the rear bar and make up a bit of a surround for the number plate with some hidden LED lights as well. Just a quick merch plug, if you wanna help support the channel, head over to the Shanky Garage merch store. I'll put a link in the show notes below and we'll jump straight into the video. Hope you enjoy. Okay, in the last episode, we talked about starting this tray for the tunner and we encountered an issue with the right-hand side chassis was kicking up and this rear cross member was bent up and it was just on the piss. And appreciate all the comments. There was a lot of uh, suggestions and taking them all into consideration. I decided that the easiest and best option, well, in my opinion, was to do the relief cut on this side. So I decided to pull the drop tank out and I cut this bar for the mount for the drop tank. So I cut that out and I was thinking that was probably gonna relieve a little bit of pressure. So I put a relief cut in the chassis here, just with a 2.5 mil cutting disc. So I just cut that all around on three sides and just left the top um, uncut. And then um, it was still had heaps of pressure on there. I couldn't really yeah, bend that down even with that cut. So I uh, yeah, then ended up cutting this um, rear bar out I uh, cut this other bar just there as well. I still need to, I'll probably end up cutting this bar out and just, yeah, putting new ones in. Since doing all that, it sits nice and level now. Once I pulled this rear bar off, I just notched it out a little bit more as well, just to free it up. So previously I had to knock it on with a hammer. So that probably wasn't helping things either. It was probably putting tension on these um, chassis rails. So yeah, that slides in and off nice and easy now. So yeah, I think that's gonna help as well. Can pretty much start welding all this back together again, but before I do that, I might as well mount these rear tail lights into this cross member here. So I've sourced these ones from, uh, these are LED auto lamps and the part number is just there. But I was, yeah, trying to source some decent tail lights and there's not really that many on the, um, on the market. A lot of them are pretty bulky or yeah, there's just not that much to choose from, but I ended up finding these ones and I think these are gonna work out pretty nice, I reckon. I'll show you over here, there's a battery connected to this one. But yeah, I think they're gonna turn out nicely. Wasn't quite sure whether to mount them to the tray or to the actual chassis, but because the tray, I'm gonna be using this RHS, which is not very bulky. It's yeah, not gonna be big enough to mount it to that. So I'm gonna have to mount them to this rear cross member. And yeah, I could probably mount them flush on there, which would still look okay, but I'm thinking I might cut a section out and mount them inside it just so it sits nice and flush. Now it's gonna be a little bit tricky to do this because it's got these lugs here. And then if I mount it roughly about there, them lugs kind of, uh, inside that chassis there. So I'm gonna have to sort of make some sort of adapter to spread out the, um, the mounting locations just so then you can access it from behind to be able to yeah, bolt it in. So yeah, I'll, I'll pull this off and I'll yeah, start cutting the section out and yeah, I'll try and figure it out as I go. Okay, so that section is cut out for the tail light. So what I've done was just put the tail light on there, traced around it. I used a cutting disc on the angle grinder, just went along and done the straights. And then on the corners, I just used uh, this air tool with the smaller cutoff disc, and then just sort of cut the corner on an angle like that. And then I was then able to get the die grinder and then just sort of take the rest out with the die grinder. And then I sort of went around with a uh, straight file and just yeah, cleaned it all up, got it nice and uh, straight. Um, and then yeah, in the corners I used sort of this half round and then a, um, a round one as well, just around in to get it all nice and neat. But with the tail light assembly, I just cut up this 25 by 25 square hollow section and I just drilled three holes. So one hole is for the harness to go through and these other two holes are for the bolt to mount the light. 
And then this one here, I just die grind it out a little bit just so I could get the uh, socket in there to tighten up the, the nut. And then, yeah, what that's gonna do is it's gonna space it. Um, so it's gonna sit there nice and flush with that 25 mil spacing. And then also it's gonna spread out where I can mount the, um, the light assembly. Uh, because like I mentioned before, this one here is gonna be yeah, hitting on the inside of the chassis rail. So. Okay, so that is what it looks like sitting in. And I think that looks really good actually. I'm really happy with that. So it sits slightly proud there, not quite flush, but I reckon that looks better anyway, like that. So that 25 mil spacing has uh, worked out really good. Now, one thing to note is I've mounted it as far as I could go that way. So it's pretty much right up against this side here. This gap's a little bit bigger. It's not much, but I just wanted to do that just to give it the best chance of being able to see them lights from the, if you are behind, so just from the road, if you're look, sort of looking down that way, because that tray is going to stick out uh, only slightly, but yeah, I just wanted to give it the best chance of being able to see them tail lights from behind there. So I just got to drill some holes into this and then yeah, fully mount that, and then I can go on to the other side. Now with the number plate, um, I'm in an iron here about whether to try and cut like a section out and then recess the number plate in with these LED lights. Um, the, the reason why I want to do that is because it's going to look good. And then also if I sort of mount this like so, just mount it simply like that, I think that rear tilt tray, when it comes uh, up, it's gonna hit these um, LED lights. So I'm thinking I might drop that down and then yeah, bring these down also like that and then kind of yeah, cut out a section and then have that recessed in and then kind of yeah, like make up a little sort of box section just to make it look yeah, nice and neat and tidy. Okay, so that's both tail lights installed on both sides and I've just made up this kind of tray thing that I'm thinking of just, yeah, cutting this section out here and then recessing that in. I'm not sure whether I'll put a bottom in or not. I'll fit that in um, and see what it looks like without a bottom. So yeah, I still sort of think these little LED lights look a bit tacky, sort of bolted like that, but um, not unless I put a cover over here maybe might make it look a little bit better but I guess then you got to try and get it in and out so yeah I'm not sure what I'll do there Okay, so that tray for the number plate's all made up and it's pretty much all ready to weld in. I ended up cutting another 10 mil out of here just so it would just sit up a little bit further. It was kind of hanging out a little bit too low, I thought, and it kind of looked a bit weird. So yeah, I just thought I'd sort of have that sitting up a little bit higher. And then I welded in these strips on the sides here just so that when the number plate sits in there, you can't see behind there. And I think I'll just leave uh, I won't bother filling all that in, there's no real point. And then yeah, once the um, number plate's in there, I can install them um, LED lights. But I think what I'll do is I'll get rid of this housing and I might use some double-sided tape or yeah, somehow I'll mount that in there and then I'll make up a little plate that bolts in there so you can still get to it. So I'll yeah, have a little plate that sits across there just so it's hidden. If I use that house, whoop, if I use that housing, it just sits up too high and I won't be able to put a plate in there. So yeah, if I'll get rid of that and then yeah, just sort of glue that down or double-sided tape and then that plate, I might be able to sort of use that to kind of hold it in as well. Okay, so this thing has become quite a saga. I've been stuffing around for a while to get this thing sorted, but I've just put some nutserts into here to hold the number plate in. I made these covers up. It was a 
pretty finicky job to get them done. So these things are removable. So the LED is going to be underneath there, obviously. So if the LED fails, you need to be able to remove the LED. So I made these removable. And yeah, there's one bolt, well, socket add cap screw underneath that'll hold this end in. And then there's another one in there. So you can get the uh, Allen key in there to undo it and then this thing removes. So I've kind of got this one just sitting in there. So yeah, that's sort of how that sits in. And then yeah, that's um, threaded there and then threaded right there. I've just drilled a hole in there for the LED wiring to go through. And then I'll probably either Sikaflex that in or maybe some double-sided tape. And then also this cover that sort of is going to clamp it in as well. So it's sort of just kind of holding that in. So I reckon, yeah, I think a bit of sicker flex will be fine for that. So yeah, plenty of stuffing around to get that like that, but I think that's going to look pretty good. Okay, so that rear bar is pretty much all done now. Just got that sitting on, but I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. I think that's turned out really good. It's sitting nice and level now as well. So it's pretty much ready to weld in. But I was also thinking I might potentially cut out the corners here. So have it follow that line of the tail light. So just cut there and then yeah, weld a plate on the end there. But yeah, I'm sort of thinking of doing that and then also keeping that same angle as the tail light put a piece in here to kind of fill that in but i just yeah i just think it might kind of improve it and sort of blend it all together a little bit better but i'm sort of undecided on that yet i'll, I'll have a think about that one other thing i've done is i've just cut out the leaf spring hanger on this side i've still got to do the other side I was originally going to keep that hanger on there just in case I needed to put the leaf springs back in for whatever reason. But yeah, I just decided to cut it out. It's just going to look a lot neater without them. And if I did need to put new or put the springs in, I probably would have had to cut this out anyway because it was yeah pretty stuffed. There's rust and stuff in there. So um, yeah, I would have had to weld new ones in anyway. So might as well just cut them out. Looks definitely a lot better. Okay, so that rear bar and the chassis, it's all welded back together. And I think that's turned out really good. You can hardly tell that that has been welded in. So that is ideal. And I just took my time with it, just minimized how much heat I put into it. So I just sort of tacked everything together, rechecked all the measurements and then done a bit more weld, like an inch and then moved on somewhere else. Then rechecked the measurements again, just kept checking, made sure none of it had moved. And yeah, it's all welded together and yeah, it's bang on um, dead level now on the back there. So I'm happy with that. Now, I know it's not ideal cutting into the chassis and re-welding it like that, but because it's from sort of your back here, it's not around where your diff mount is or further forward, there's not really gonna be much load there. Um, so it's only gotta hold the tray. So if it was, yeah, around here or more forward, then yeah, I definitely would have not cut into it and re-weld it, but I don't think it's gonna be a major issue cutting it back here. Now, there was a few comments in the previous video about you shouldn't use the ground to measure off, and I totally agree with that, it's not ideal. But after adjusting all the tire pressures, I yeah, went around, checked all the tire presses, pressures, adjusted them up, adjusted all the coilovers, and I got the ute sitting as level as I could get it, but it was still sitting up about 15 mil on this side, on this right hand side. And after putting this straight edge on there, it does sit relatively flat. There doesn't seem to be too much sort of movement in that concrete with that straight edge there. And yeah, they're definitely, um, yeah, there's definitely not 15 mil variance in the concrete anyway. So you could yeah, definitely see looking at the back here that it was kicked up on that side. So yeah, that seems to be um, relatively um, pretty much bang on even measuring it off the concrete. I know it's probably not going to be perfect. There may be yeah, one or two mil difference, but 
one or two mil, I can live with that. But yeah, 15 mil was um, way on the piss. So at least it's a good base now to start this tray. Okay, so we're back on the ground and I'm still undecided whether I should cut them corner sections off and then put a filler piece in there. Same angle as the tail lights, but maybe you guys can let me know in the comments what you think I should do there. Obviously it would have been easier doing it off the car, but I can still do it. Um, I just think it probably would blend it all together nicely, but it still looks good like that anyway. But yeah, let me know in the comment section what you think there. Okay, so I'm glad to get all that chassis done. It was a bit of a step backwards, but I think it turned out pretty good. It was good being able to pull that bar out, get them lights installed, get that number plate done as well. I got them um, spring hang hangers cut out. So just generally the back looks a hell of a lot better now. So yeah, it wasn't, um, yeah, it was a fair bit of work, but yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. If you are new to the channel and this build, I highly recommend checking out the build from the very first episode to the latest. So I'll put a card up in this corner here and yeah, it's all in order. So yeah, have a good binge on that. There's two years of documenting this build on there. So everything that I've done to the tunner is all documented. Once again, if you like what I do and wanna help support the channel, head over to the merch store. So I'll put a link in the show notes below. And yeah, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification to give you alerts on when a new video comes out. But yeah, we'll leave it with that and we'll see you next time on Shanky Garage. Cheers guys.